promoted price. These are non-promoted sales. Then we have our promoted price and our total sales. And then we can still do the decomposition. And remember that this is the hypothetical point that we did all that math for. So we need to predict that point. This is where the predictive analytics part comes in. Because we're able to estimate those demand curves, then we can say, OK, what would have happened if we had just lowered price without promotion? And that's what that is. It's what we call in analytics um, a counterfactual. It's not a fact. It doesn't really exist. But we're hypothesizing. If we can estimate this with confidence, and this is why we look at r squares and things like that, if we can estimate that demand curve with confidence, then we can say, OK, if we just lowered price, we would have sold more. And this is how much more we would have sold. The rest, the residual, is we're going to attribute to the fact that we promoted. We're going to, we're going to call that the promotional lift. And again, this kind of begs the question of optimization. If there are different promotional effects at different prices, then which price promotion combination is going to maximize your promotional lift? And it turns out that that's, it's not that hard of a problem to do, but it's, a, it's essentially a, a calculus problem, an optimization problem. Can you repeat that? Um, the, if there's different promotional effects at different prices, then we can? Uh, yeah, so, so if, there, if promotion has different effects at different prices, then, like I said, that kind of begs the question of, what well, is there a price promotion combination that maximizes the effect of promotion? And the answer is yes. But, like I said, it's a calculus problem, and we're not going to do any kind of optimization stuff. But it's in the paper, which is an awesome paper, by the way, uh, if I haven't mentioned that. Okay, so what does the data say? And remember, this was a, I don't not remember, but when I did the lit review, this was, this was kind of a point of contention. And there were two, uh, there were two camps. Uh, one, was, um, one was Northwestern's Kellogg School, and they believed in one, kind of, they kind of held one position. And the other was, uh, was it Harvard or, I think it was Yale's. Uh, well, I forget what Yale's uh, school business is called. Um, and they had the other one. And no one was really winning. And I don't know why, it, it seemed pretty easy. Okay, just graph the demand curves. Do they look different? Are they different or are they not? So there's your two demand curves. Do, do those look parallel to you? No. Done. Man, they don't look parallel. So what that means is that there is heterogeneity, that people that buy, and again, let's kind of look past the, the trees to, to the forest, people that buy on promotion are different than people that buy off promotion. It's the behavioral aspect. And this seemed really easy to me. Uh, but in all the literature review, no one ever actually kind of, they ran regressions, but they never looked at the, the graphs, which is what we do all the time. So I just ran that and I said, well, those don't look the same to me. And we can test for statistical dif difference. We can test to see, OK, you know, is, is this slope really different than that slope? Um, the answer is yes. So but we, can, we can do all that stuff by running dummies and interaction. Um, but it wasn't, yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't anything brilliant, I guess. The paper's brilliant, but that, kind of looking at that graph wasn't, didn't require much brilliance. And I didn't point it out earlier, but we can also see that from, these are our price coefficients, and the price coefficients represent the slopes. Clearly, you can see that people that buy on promotion, the promoted weekly sales, that coefficient is a lot larger, or let's just say a lot more negative, than the coefficient on the non-promoted sales, which means what? How do we interpret that price coefficient? That price coefficient literally is the price sensitivity. People that buy on promotion are more sensitive to prices than people that buy off promotion. If that's true, we can exploit that knowledge and try to optimize our promotional price promotion mix.
that's the heart of business intelligence. Using data to gain insights to, at the very, at the very end, make more money for the firm. It's all about the Benjamins, as they say. As they say in the hood. And by the hood, I mean Glen Allen. <laughs> Which is a pretty rough area. If I were you guys, I'd stay out of it. Uh, yeah. I'm the roughest guy there, and that's not saying much. Um, and I get beat up all the time. I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, so price sensitivity. Um, yeah, so we can see that promoted people that buy on promotion are much more price sensitive. But like I said, we knew that. We, we knew that before. You know your aunt or your grandma or your uncle will only buy the stuff on promotion. You know, why do you have 14 boxes of crackers? Because they were on sale. You know, why, you know, why, are we drinking, why are we drinking Bud Light? Because it was on sale. You know, we knew that. We, we kind of had this, this uh, intuition, and that's what drove a lot of this paper is just kind of common knowledge. We can go test it, which, we, which I did. We can go test it. Yeah, those sure look different to me. But in the end, we're, we're using kind of intuition and saying, okay, what if, what if those people are different? And again, the big insight from that is that heterogeneity means that promotion has different effects at different prices, which means we can optimize that promotion. If those two lines are parallel, then promotion has the same effect no matter where we're at sliding up and down um, on those demand curves. But they're not parallel. They're, as we saw in the picture, as you can see here, different. Uh, okay. So um, decomposition one is the one we looked at. And this is at a price. So what I did was I looked at two $1 price changes. So price of $9, non-promoted price of $9, and on sale for uh, 8 bucks. At, not, excuse me, at $9 and $8, as we saw, the promotion on the left was only uh, 8%. Then I looked at another decomposition. Just slide it down those demand curves, right? Slide down and said, okay, now the non-promoted price is eight bucks, and the promoted price is again a dollar less to seven dollars. So it's still it's the same one dollar discount, but look what happens to the promotional effect. Total effect is sixty percent, but again, in this case, half of that, <coughs> excuse me, half of that is due to uh, the price reduction. But now our promotion goes up to almost fifty percent. Uh, 29%. So promotion has a much bigger lift. The pure effect of promotion, not the muddled total effect, but the pure effect of promotion is greater at a lower price than it is at the higher price. Just as we suspected it would be, or just as the theory told us when we, when we drew this on the graph. This is awesome. This is why this is my second favorite paper. Any questions? This doesn't seem as excited as I am. And this is, how old is this? I'm still excited over this paper. Uh, this is awesome. Though this, think about this. This didn't exist before this paper. This methodology didn't exist. Well, yeah, well, Hockett did it, but, um, but it's mine now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was uh, uh, Picasso said, uh, good artists borrow, great artists steal. What does that mean? It's mine now. <laughs> right? I'm not borrowing here and there. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put my twist on it, and now it's mine. Uh, so this is now the Cuellar decomposition, not the Oaxaca decomposition. <laughs> kind of nice ring to it. It's kind of nice ring to it. Yeah. Um, and again, this is. This really hasn't trickled out. You know, how many, how many uh, brand managers or, or marketing executives read uh, the Journal of Strategic Marketing, I think is what it is. Interesting uh, uh, kind of aside, another interesting aside. Um, you know, we publish these papers. This is how we get our tenure and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's this, you know, we, we, we write these papers and we send them out to journals. And the turnaround in journals is just notorious. It could take two years to get... Um, a paper published. So you kind of aim for a journal that's going to, you know, it'll accept it and um, uh, and you'll get a fairly quick turnaround. And even that, it, it, it'll take a good year and a half, two years. Uh, so I sent this to a, a kind of mid-level journal that I thought, okay, I'm going to accept it, it'll get a good turnaround. It, 
got rejected. <laughs> but this was the awesomest rejection letter I ever got. The editor said, we're rejecting this because this belongs in a better journal than ours. It was awesome. He said, you should send this to the number one journal, which is the Journal of uh, Consumer Research. Um, so that was pretty cool. So I did, and it got rejected. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's good, but it's not that good. Uh, which is kind of strange because they said, it, for whatever reason, they didn't like it. I don't know. So I kind of went back to it. So I went low. Got rejected, went high, super high, got rejected, and then kind of ended up in this, this journal of strategic marketing. So, um, so we got rejected twice. One a good rejection, one a, one a it's not good enough for this. Uh, which is strange because they're looking for original research, and this this has never been done before, except for except for Waka. But that's labor economics, and now this is, this is yeah. so completely different. Completely different. Oh, there's our promotional lips. Any questions? All right, let's look at, uh, let's do this in Stata. So this is nice. Um, now these are the equations that we're going to rely on. But really, I think the key to doing this is, and we'll not worry about the heterogeneity for now. But the key to this is any minute now. Is this picture? This is the picture we want to have, kind of in our head, or, or literally <coughs> have on a you know, scratch paper or whatever it is. Uh, this is the picture we want, and this is the picture that's going to help us. So what are we going to do? We're going to do exactly what we do. Uh, what we do, uh, just like we would draw this. We would draw that, and we would. You can kind of see what's going on here. We can see why the promotional lift is so much larger than it really should be. So we're going to estimate a demand curve without promotion. We're going to estimate a demand curve with promotion. Then we're going to say, okay, at a promoted, I'm sorry, at a non-promoted price, what would sales have been? At the promoted price, what would sales have been on the non-promoted demand curve? That's this counterfactual or hypothetical. And then say, okay, what were sales at the promoted price along the promoted demand curve? So instead of measuring all this as the promotional lift, we're going to be able to subtract out this part, and we're going to attribute that to promotion, which is a truer, more accurate measure of promotion. So this is the picture we want in our, in our head that's going to guide us. Sorry, did you say Q2 was a more accurate portrayal of promotion because that's along the original demand curve versus? It's the distance Q1 minus Q2. Oh, okay. Yeah, so delta Q1. So have that picture kind of next to you. All right, let's uh, crank open our econometrics machine. They always say, you know, close out with uh, leave the best stuff for last. So. Led Zeppelin closes with stairway to heaven. This is my uh, this is my stairway to heaven. This is the wrong class. Of course, as soon as you even know, that's it. I'm sure Justin Bieber closes with his best song. If there's such a thing, I think that might be an oxymoron. Best and Justin Bieber don't necessarily go together. All right, so same data set. So we, we're already, you know, familiar with this. We got to do the whole, the whole format thing. Actually, I don't even know if we need to, but let's get it out of the way. Oh, and oh, how'd the uh, the reshape go? Good. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, that's really the, is my reshape in here? There it is. No. 
So we're using the reshaped data set we originally. Yeah. And again, you can't, which is one of the reasons why this stuff doesn't get done, is you can't do this unless the data is put in a format that, that is conducive to that. Price, okay, so we know how to count for price. Decomposition. All right, so here's our decomposition. Again, step one, estimate the demand without promotion, estimate demand with promotion. Pretty simple. I don't know if I constructed my dummy or not. So is my dummy in here? Okay, so obviously this is promoted demand. And again, we're just sticking with the simple stuff now. But here's our promoted demand. Uh, here's our promoted, no, yes, promoted, uh, depromo equals one. Uh, slope, promoted slope, promoted um, intercept. That's literally the equation of a straight line. Four. It's literally our equation for the promoted demand. And <coughs> here is our promotion for the non-promoted demand. Main part being is that promoted demand price coefficient is what is that more than twice that right it's 1653 versus 708 so uh, what this is saying is that promoted consumers are twice as sensitive to price as non-promoted consumers which again makes more sense than assuming that they're they behave similarly they're homogeneous Both are statistically significant, um, all that kind of good stuff. All right, so since we have these, again, these are literally two equations, so we just estimated <coughs> promoted, I'm sorry, non promoted and promoted demand. Now we just have to evaluate the effect of promotion. But first we have to choose a couple of prices. All right, we've got to choose a non-promoted price, and we have to choose a promoted price. And it doesn't matter. But we're still going to decompose the effect. Um, but we just have to specify those two prices. We have to acknowledge the fact that, and again, the key to that is we have to acknowledge the fact that every time these firms, at least in the wine industry, and I'm not sure about every other industry, but every time in the wine industry, at least in the data that we have, every time they run a promotion, they always reduce price. That's just the way they, they operate. It, may, it makes sense, uh, but it also creates difficulties in measuring the effect of promotion if you're also always lowering price. So we're going to evaluate it at some, some price. Any questions? All right. Um, I chose, let's see. I better go back here. So run, remember, uh, margins is our post-regression command. So this is our promoted.
So I looked at the promoted demand curve. So I chose two prices, eight and nine dollars. Um, for the promoted demand curve, we just need the we just need the one price, right? The promoted price. So along the promoted demand curve, we just need that one point. We need this point, or we need three points. The other two points, however, are going to be along the non-promoted demand curve. So that's why I chose the margins, which just gives us a, a, literally a forecast, a prediction. And so that's our promoted demand curve. And at a price of $8, where's my command? Yeah. At a price of eight bucks, this is how much we would sell. How many cases we would sell? I think this is weekly data. I'm not sure. Was it weekly? I guess you guys. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Three thousand cases a week. That's pretty good. That's almost as much as I drink. Not quite. Uh, okay. So we got that, and then we need. So that's Q1. Q1. Exactly. That's Q1. I'm blinding myself. Then we need these two points here. Again, both of them are along the non-promoted demand curve. So we need Q2, which is uh, Q2, which is the promoted price evaluated at along the non-promoted demand curve. And then we need Q0, which is the non-promoted price along the non-promoted demand curve. So we. Again, run to our little analytics machine. Again, these are post regression commands. So if I, I don't want to run the, those two prices right now, I have to run the non promoted regression. We're just thinking random numbers, right? Uh, yeah, I just chose eight, eight, nine dollars. <laughs> Bless, Bless you. Bless you. Okay, so now we have. Can I squeeze these in? Uh, let's see. I'm going to squeeze it in this little spot here. Nice per unit quantity. Again, we know they're not parallel, but We'll worry about that later. So this is demand, um, non-promoted, demand, promoted. Uh, let me go up a second. <coughs> well, let's just use these. It's <coughs> OK. So we know how to read um, our margins, right? Yeah. One is, what is one? Eight. Eight dollars, yeah. Okay, so, and that is the promoted or the non promoted price? That's not the promoted price. Promoted price, okay. So let's do um, the non promoted price. So this would be $9, and then this will be $8. So non promoted price, non promoted volume, 1979. Wouldn't it be the other one, number one? Go ahead. Would it be number one value, though, for eight? For eight. Because if it's eight, wouldn't it be number one, so 268 eight? He's looking at number one. So that's nine. One. He's looking at $9. Oh. Yeah, because I want the non-promoted price along the non-promoted demand. Okay. No, that, that gets confusing, right? It's not. If it was easy, then someone else would come up with it. Eventually. Uh, okay, so, and then again, these are both points along the non promoted demand curve, so this is 26, 26, uh, 88. I was going to make a smart out comment, but I'm on tape. Okay. And uh, along the promoted demand, remember we only need the one point along the pro promoted demand curve. Uh, you told me what it was, but I forgot. Yeah, 34.44. Yeah, 
Remember, post regression. So <clears throat> run the promoted demand curve, regression, margin it out at eight dollars, and we could have done the math by hand, right? We could have done, we could have said sixteen six seven eight plus uh, eight dollars times uh, or minus eight dollars times uh, sixteen fifty three, and we would have gotten thirty four. Again, normally this would be the lift, whatever that is. And that is, I'm sure I've got that in my head. Don't ask me to do that in my head. You said it was. I'm sorry, one more time? The difference, the normally the lift would be the difference between. Yeah, so here's the difference due to price. So I just took the uh, 2688 minus the 17, I'm sorry, 1979. Is that right? 1979? Yeah. Minus 1979. And this difference is 708 cases. And that's Q. That's, well, Q well, that's Q2 minus Q1. Q1. I mean, minus Q0, because Q1 is the 3449. Yeah, that's Q2 minus I think so. Q0. Yeah. I have to get yeah. That difference is going to be seven sixty one. It's going to be 761. So in this case, did I do the percentages? Yeah, we definitely want to look at percentages. And that's what we want the lift to be? Normally, we want to measure these in terms of, yeah, in terms of lift. So the lift would be, I guess I didn't do it. So let's do this. So the total lift is that right? yeah. so the total <coughs> lift is going to be the thirty So total lift to be 1,400 cases, 1,469, which we knew, I guess, uh, 700 and 700. And in this case, uh, a little bit more than half is going to be due to promotion. So it's pretty easy. Again, despite all the math that we went through, it's pretty easy if you've got the picture down. It's pretty simple to, to, to visualize. And what we can do now is <clears throat> break it down by month. We can see that, or we can see, okay, not only can we get a more accurate measure or an, an accurate measure of promotion, we can see where when promotion has its biggest effect. I guess in this case, um, in terms of which months. Any question? Kind of what we're doing. So what do we need to do? We just need to add months to our regression.
right. You can see those same two regressions. Whoops. What does the C mean? Ah. Uh. <laughs> These are called factor variables. And what they allow us to do, <coughs> excuse me, what they allow us to do is construct, we knew the I dot, right? We used I dot. And so I dot is for dummies or indicators. That's what the I stands for is indicators. Um, but the C dot is for continuous variables, like numeric variables. So I dot is for dummies, and it'll construct the, the 12 dummies. The C dot is if we want to interact price and month. And why would we interact price and month? If prices vary by month, then um, you'd want to interact these two things. So what we did was we, we interacted um, price and month. So C dot is to tell us data that price is a continuous variable. I dot is to tell us data that month is a dummy variable, indicator variable. And then the double pound means one pound is for construct the interactions, and then two pounds means construct both dummies and interactions. So you can see here, here are the dummies, and then here are the list of uh, month times price. <coughs> Shortcuts uh, that make constructing dummies and interactions a lot easier. All right. <coughs> now we're going to evaluate this. Again, we're going to utilize our margins. But we're going to evaluate it over a month. Months. So these are, I forgot which, so if this, this is only one regression, so this is promotion, promoted. I'm sorry, this is only one price, so it's promoted. So these are the quantities we would sell on promotion at the promoted price. So this is, these are the quantities we would sell on promotion at the promoted price. So these are these quantities, but we've done them by month, exactly. We've done them by month. You see that? We need these two. These are along the non-promoted demand curve. And again, so we're going to use the same two prices, eight and nine bucks, but we're going to get 12 of these. We're going to get, uh, well, we're going to get 24, uh, because we're going to get 